I did want to bring us back to a really important point that you brought up, which was the two factors that you kind of encourage you to go into the hybrid workforce or work environment. Um, those two factors were buyers just in general. We were in the startup acquisition phase. And so buyers are just more attracted to startups with that physical location because it seems more stable, even if that can be kind of an old school thinking where a lot of people are really embracing the remote workforce. Um, a lot of buyers or investors in the startup space are typically still have that traditional mindset. And then the second one being that training remotely can be challenging. Um, you know, you can feel isolated, it can be harder to ask for help, or even when you train in person, and I've felt this too, you can really learn by osmosis, just being yeah. around more experienced people and seeing how they work. Um, you really do end up learning a lot in that environment too. And I will say, as somebody who is also a big advocate for remote work, I've been remote for most of my career. I think if you are a remote team, having those meetups is essential. Like you can't just operate 100% remote, never meet each other in person. Because I totally agree with the point that you brought up, like the energy from meeting somebody in person and like getting to do a little powwow brainstorm session together. Yeah. You come up with things that you wouldn't have just being at home in the same place that you always work in or being in front of a computer. It's it's also like the personalities of people. Like So I think when, when we're working remote, I, I don't think people are less efficient. In fact, I think I think there is, you know, a really good level of efficiency that comes from working in your home environment, in your office, in your space. I think it's good, like mental health. I do think one of the things that lacks, um, I, th I think the biggest thing that remote life is challenging for is creating a, a, a good company culture because it can be, unless you're in, yeah, I mean, it, it can be really hard to, to bring your team together, to get to know each other on like a personal level, to uncover like people's personalities. Like, so when you're working in the office, I think that's what they seem to enjoy the most is that sure. The training I think is, is good, but it's also like, I think work becomes more enjoyable uh, for them and they enjoy like coming to work and, and the environment of the people they work with, which yeah, in remote life, like unless you're going to be on like a lot of zoom calls with your team, like it's hard to, to get that. And that's why I think on Thursdays, like when we do our, our calls, our team calls, like I've tried to make sure that they, they keep those mostly like personal, like it's not just like, here's a, a reading of the minutes and here's the main things we need to do. Like it should be, let's get to know each other as a team. Let's have a little fun. Let's ask each other questions. And then sure. Um, we probably do that for like an hour. And then there's like 30 minutes where there's like legitimate, like updates and, um, maybe more business type stuff. And I want to keep it that way. Like, and I probably wouldn't care if the, the whole 90 minutes or the whole 60 minutes was, um, do we do it? Is that just an hour? But yeah. If the whole 60 minutes was like just more personal and team building. And then, you know, we send an email with like wins and stuff or something like I don't, what I don't want is for like the company stuff to like overwhelm that call. Um, I want to keep it mostly like personal and team building. Yeah. And I feel like those Thursday calls have been the space that I've really gotten to know a lot of people. Um, and I will say like also being a remote employee and like knowing that we have an office where people are also getting to know each other. Um, something that I've been trying to do, and I think any remote employee should be doing, is going out of my way to make those connections with people. So, like, I've scheduled one-on-ones with, like, Carly and Jonathan. Tina and I have had a few one-on-ones. And then Brian's my team lead, so, of course, I have one-on-ones with him. But trying to reach out to people who, like, even I don't talk with on a regular basis. Because yeah. in past roles I've been in, I've been like, oh, this person seems really cool. Like, I'd love to get to know them, but maybe we'll connect if we ever work on a project together. And it's just yeah. like the if that ever happens. And honestly, I don't know why I had that mindset. I think like breaking that has been a really important thing for me in my personal development because reaching out and like actually um, actively initiating those conversations with people that I don't normally talk to has been a really cool way for me to get to know people on the team too. Yeah. And so, I mean, on a, on a company level, trying to foster that interaction, like is beneficial for us because if people actually enjoy their job, they'll stay with us longer. And then on a, on an employee level, like 
if you don't like, if you, if you hate your job or if you're just working in isolation and all this is, is a transaction, like you, you work, you get a paycheck. If you like your paycheck and you don't hate your work, then you stay. So it brings another element to both sides. Um, and I think like, yeah, I mean, even, even for me, like, I, yeah, I don't really think of it as like the corporate, like we need to improve employee interactions because it'll reduce churn by 7.5%. It's more like I want to enjoy my job too. And I want to work in an environment and I'm a ro remote worker. Like I'm the, I'm the CEO and I work remotely. Um, well, I have Susanna next to me, so <laughs> we, we, we have our office, but like, um, and it's funny cause we were talking like, we'll even take our lunch break and we'll, we'll go sit at the table and, and take our lunch break. And it's almost like, that's what they do at the office though. So that's kind of nice. Like they all stop working. They'll go sit at the table. They'll have like a little conversation. So there's little things like, I think the remote life has, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, and try and trying to balance that, I think is going to be tough because what do those Thursday meetings look like when we have 50 people? Like right. not, not everyone's going to get a chance to talk. So then like, do those slowly unintentionally become more corporate because we can't like implement everyone or do those teams like grow and maybe we have segments. So you still have that like on a certain level, like we figure out what that magic number that you can kind of have. Um, and then we rotate people through different. So you're like interacting with different groups. Um, Cause I honestly think that, that to me, I don't stay like, I'm not worried about how we're going to like maintain efficiencies and how we're going to do Like I worry about how we're going to keep the, the environment we have, the culture we have, like as we grow and it not turn in, like it not unintentionally turn into like some cold corporate -y, like structure as we just try to push for like better margins. Yeah. And I will say, and maybe this is more off the record. Um, I know that like Carly brought up the happy hour. We did one happy hour and there was like, four or five of us in it but that was a really great chance like I got to know Eli and Hannah really well during that mm. like one hour that we were together on like a random Saturday um, and I know she's trying to coordinate more of those but nobody really responded to her message so she was a little sad about that <laughs> and then so, um, like Carly ahead. and Tina were trying to organize something where like the remote employees could, like have lunch together once a week or something hmm. how do you feel about that I, I'm really excited about the having lunch with Carly and Tina. We haven't found a time yet, but, um, and it's definitely not something I could do every single lunch break, but if it was like a standing invitation and it's like, you don't have to come, that is nice to have so that I have those opportunities yeah. to talk to people. Um, the happy hour was fun. I think, yeah, it's not something that like we can force people to go to. Cause I don't think that's something you should ever force people to go to, but I like the idea of having the opportunity to. Um, I think what might be interesting is if, so if the standing lunch invitation, um, it wasn't just like, yeah, I guess they could have zoom with you guys, but they could also probably set something up in the office. So like in the office, they have lunch and they have like their table, they all sit around. Like it probably mm -hmm. wouldn't be that hard for like there to be, well, I'm not going to give Luis his 85 inch TV that he, that he wants to have right there. But like, if there was something there and then it could be like, you know, whatever remote people wanted to be there um, while the in-office team is eating and you can like, you can see everyone at the office, they can see you, you're at your desk or whatever, like, and maybe that's weird. Maybe it's not. Um, but it's like, it's like an open thing. Like, you know, at this time they take the office, people take their lunch. If you want to join in, um, I don't know how I feel about that too. Like, I definitely want to want to mandate that. And then I was, I wasn't really sure about the the happy hour. I just kind of let it happen. I'm sure it was fine. I ha had no intention of joining because I feel like, I feel like I want the everyone to kind of have like their space, um, without like kind of the boss like making like it's looming over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I like the idea of like the team interacting with each other. And if they want to have that, um, you know, my, I guess, yeah, from my main worry would be, yeah, people are, uh, there, there's some, there's some like challenges that could come from that. If you have a group of employees that are um, on after hours and drinking on a Friday night. Um, so, you know, I just have to trust uh, that people, um I'm sure it was, I'm sure like it's fine, but that's another one of those things. Like there's things that might be okay now. And then as we grow, like 
not that we want to like limit it or become more corporate but like you open yourself up to more and more risks so it's it's interesting to like try to push those lines or or keep things where it's like we we want it to be a certain culture but we also want to we want to include everyone and we also mm-hmm. don't don't want to get sued um so <laughs> Yeah, something else I have seen other teams do with varying success was like doing rotating one-on-ones where like everybody has time to talk to everybody one-on-one like throughout the month or over a few months or something like that. But that's kind of a lot to schedule and like manage, especially once we get into like a bigger team. Obviously right now it's probably pretty easy with only like 20 or so people to match up. Yeah. Or it could, yeah, maybe not, maybe one-on-ones become hard, but it could be groups of two or three or something. Right. That might be more. Yeah. (laughs) I I think, I think that will be challenging um, as we grow and it'll just get more complicated. Like, yeah, I try to think like, how is this going to work at 50 people? Um, Mm -hmm. And almost, I mean, going from 20 to 50, like just complicates things a lot like the things that we're doing now in most aspects, like wouldn't really work that well at 50 with the team meetings. Uh, I guess the teams would, cause we just have more teams, more team leads, but yeah, some of them yeah. are a little tricky. I have seen too, like I was reading this article that was about um, startups growth or growth in startups and how like the first like 20 or so employees can be really close. But then when you get to like 50, the remaining 30, like, feel disconnected from this like click of 20 people that got close to each other and then like as you grow like it continues to be more of a problem so I can definitely see how we would want to make that or like why we would want to make that a priority too yeah I can I can see that I mean I can already see it for like myself um I mean there's there's new hires that I I mean most of the new hires I haven't had a one-on-one with them and my my interactions with them are pretty limited to like the team meetings um Mm -hmm. or like if they have extra concerns but they because there's that disconnect um you know they weren't part of that like super inner circle already like if they ever had a need they're not super comfortable reaching out to me directly um and that's only going to get worse and now even Josh and Jonathan uh, Josh probably more specifically because the ops team is growing faster than the sales side. Like he's he can feel a little disconnected from what's going on with the account managers because now it's Brian and Tina mm-hmm. managing their teams. Brian and Tina have a much better beat on how the account manager is doing. Josh is funneling into Brian and Tina and trusting that they're surfacing things. Um, so I mean, it's it's good it's good problems to have, but it's. Yeah, it's it's interesting how to how to think about those and navigate them, especially when you then throw in that some of them are in office, some of them are remote, and mm-hmm. how do you make sure they all get 